Hello everybody, this is Amherst Striker here. Today I've got the latest of the Micro Draco series, the VSKA, and these are made in the United States. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Axe and Core Belts, linked to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. These just came out this year, and unlike the regular Micro Draco that is made in Romania, these are made here in the United States, all of the components, including the standard capacity magazine, the Palm US on it is the trademark you'll see on them, but this is no different than any other AK magazine. So this will work with any AK magazine you've got, similar to these standard capacity PMAGs which are actually turn out to be a little bit better magazine than the one that came with it, these are much easier to load. The follower on the one that came with it is very stiff, very difficult to load. These load smoothly. And I, I would say the PMAG is the mag to go with overall. The grip is different. It's got a much nicer contoured grip. And I happen to have an original one here. You can see the grip is very kind of smooth, straight. There's a little bit of texture here, but overall it's very smooth. It's almost slippery and it kind of narrow. Also take a look at the mag release lever. The paddle is easy to get to. It's your typical AK paddle, but it's kind of been on the narrow side. And the new one, as I see, as you can see, the grip is really well contoured and that mag release is a very big paddle, very easy to get to. So you can see it's just really easy to get your finger on it to operate it. Both of these have what they call an enhanced trigger. So unlike a typical AK trigger, or, you know, normal AK trigger, which can be on the gritty side, these are actually decent triggers. And I'm going to demonstrate the trigger on this one first showing that, of course, it's unloaded, so it's not going to bite. That was the whole trigger pull. And I actually meant to, to do a little bit of take up, and there really isn't any. So I'm going to cycle it again hair of take up right there and then a very short very light very crisp break and no trigger slap so it's a very nice trigger and that's not characteristic of an AK these are the factory triggers they haven't done anything with these at all so that's one of the improvements uh, in this series in the Micro Draco and I'll show you the trigger on the other one just for reference this one of course is also unloaded Similar, just a very little bit of take up, a little bit more travel after the take up, but then a light crisp break. So I'd say the trigger on the new one is a hair better, but both of these triggers are actually nice and neither one of these is in by any stretch a combat trigger. The body is all phosphate coated, so that should help with corrosion. The dust cover is not, it's just you know the regular standard finish and the bolt is phosphate coated. And that's going to be play a factor in some of the reliability that we encountered. This one, the original one, the Romanian one, is phosphate coated as well on the body and phosphate coated on the dust cover. But the bolt is not phosphate coated. The bolt has just got regular treatment on it. And I think that makes a difference in the reliability. This Romanian one worked from round one, which is typical of an AK. These things just work, regardless of what you do with them. This one we had some trouble with, and I'll get to talking about that, but while I've got them side by side, one of the other changes that you can see is the forend. This is a nice wood, but it's kind of rough. And I kind of do like the pattern on it. Hammer likes the pattern on this one better. But overall, this is a little bit rough. It's not, a, it, not as high a grade of wood as this one. This one's very nice looking, but it's really polished smooth. There's no rough edges on it or anything. It's got a nice pattern to it. This is just an overall higher quality wood piece and better handled. So overall between the two, this one's got much better quality wood. And one thing you can see very clearly that's a difference is this Picatinny rail. So the new version has a Picatinny rail. And if I get it turned right, you'll see there's a notch in it that can be used as a sight. So right from the get-go, you've got this notch, and then you've got, of course, the front post sight. 
I didn't find that to be a particularly accurate nor easy to see sight combination, but the purpose of this is that you can put an optic on it. And depending on what you're going to use this for, any of the pistol optics that are out there would work well for it. I'm looking for something that's potentially solar powered or fiber optic powered red dot to put on here because I intend to use this as a truck gun. So, you know, something that you've got to take care of batteries on would not be a good thing. Something that maybe has shake awake, but even that it's going to be used in a vehicle, so it's going to get shaken and probably would wake up a lot. So I'm going to try to find a good optic for this because AK sights in general aren't that good. The sights on the old one aren't particularly any better. I painted white dots on them, but you still, you've got a rear sight that's just basically a small narrow notch and then a front post. The front post, so that hooded post, it's the same on both of them, and the dust cover on the original one has this sight built into it that you see. But these also aren't long range weapons. They're meant to solve close range problems, potentially large group problems, wild animal problems, things like that. And you're, you're not taking something like this hunting and trying to do a 250 yard shot. That's just not what these are. They have a massive muzzle flash. Half the powder is still burning when they come out. In fact, the bullet is when it's chambered, you know, the beginning of the chamber is here. The bullet probably comes to about here. So the tip of the bullet's already halfway down the barrel when it's chambered. And not only do you have that very large muzzle flash, they're very loud. So if you're trying to send a message to something that's causing you a problem or a large group of some things that are causing you a problem, it's accurate enough to, at relatively you know, normal self-defense ranges to hit the target you're looking for if you can see the sights, but it also is going to send a clear and loud message to the other critters around that it's time to move on. So as a truck gun, they're short, they're compact, they're reliable, except this one is wasn't quite reliable yet. This one's going to need some breaking in, but that's the purpose of these things. They're not meant for long-range shooting, marksman shooting, or you know, typical combat type shooting. There's there's a use for these. Now I'll talk about the reliability. I've mentioned it a couple times on this one. The phosphate coating that's on both the bolt and the body, phosphate is kind of gritty, kind of abrasive. When it does wear, it kind of turns into like a sticky before it goes away. And what I found is this one had a number of malfunctions, which is not consistent with an AK. The first malfunction I had was significant enough I had to disassemble it at the range to get it to get the eject the round out. That may have been an ammo problem because it's steel ammo, it's tool ammo, but it's not top of the line ammo. But there were a couple fails to feeds and a couple other malfunctions with it that we didn't encounter with this one. This one just worked out of the box. Of course, then again, this is the original design. So I'm thinking what's going to have to happen is the surfaces that are phosphate on both the, the chassis and the bolt are going to have to wear against each other to a equilibrium point, and then I think it'll become reliable. I think it will be reliable, but it wasn't reliable out of the box. The other thing is it came bone dry from the manufacturer, which is fine from a shipping perspective. The phosphate will pre prevent it from corroding. But if you take this out of the box, take it to the range and expect it to work, you're, you're not going to be happy. It does need to be cleaned and oiled, pretty much like any firearm. I always clean and oil any firearm. But in particular, these, they didn't come ready to go. A couple other notes on these. The flash hider is removable. Oh, there's a little pin you can push down. It's right here. A little pin you push down, you can thread this off. It's a 14 by 1 left-hand thread. And this one is similar. It's just that the pin's at the other end. One thing I did notice about the flash hider is this one has got a blank spot at the bottom. So it acts more like a muzzle brake, you know, driving it up into the sides. And this one is open all the way around. Neither one of these has significant recoil. The 7.62x39 is not a high recoiling cartridge to begin with. These are heavy. You do get a really good grip on it with this wood both of them, whichever one you've got, and this kind of this ridge here acts as a hand guard to keep your hand from sliding up into the business end. You got a hold of this, your hand sits up against it, and you're going to stay put. I found these as easy to control as any rifle pistol. So the hand stop here, the curvature of it, it fits your hand nicely, you're going to stay in it. Now you need to make sure you don't grab it this way, you grab it here, 
and keep in mind the gas blocks up here so this is going to get hot so you want to keep your hands on the wood but it's easy to get a hold of it it's true of both of them they're both contoured roughly the same both are easy to get a hold of the contour on the the new one fit fits the kind of the shape of a human hand a little bit better this one is just a hair less comfortable than this one they've spent a little more time on the ergonomics of just fitting that contour functionally they're the same I would say that uh, if I had to choose between the two grips I do like this one better you know, overall the kind of the contouring on that wood is kind of cool to look at but this one is just overall better done smoother nicer and contours to the hand just a little bit better neither one of these has the little stop that's common on like the Zestava Pops that holds this back when you're disassembling it. So these can be a bit of fun to get this pushed forward because you have to push this button forward and it's part of the recoil spring assembly to lift this out. Not having that stop makes it a little more cumbersome to do. You end up having to kind of just use the heel of your hand to shove it in, but you've also got to line it up at the front with the notches here. So that'd be one feature I wish these have. Neither one of these has it, so it's not anything that's lost. But on the micros, not having that lock is kind of a disadvantage. If you do have a malfunction where you have to disassemble this, especially if you have to be cognizant of the muzzle, you know, if you're on an indoor range, which is where I was when I was dealing with that first malfunction, regardless of whatever it is I was doing, the fact that I had it disassembled the magazine out, that muzzle had to stay down range. So I couldn't turn it into an area that was convenient for me that had that stop. I would have been able to lock that in place, put the cover on at my convenience, and release it. But again, you're not going to get that on either one of them. Other AK designs have the whole dust covers on a hinge, and it just hinges up. And of course, those are the easiest to work with. Overall, it is an AK. It works like an AK. The internal components are an AK. It's kind of got some improvements over an AK as far as the fire control group and, things, and having a rail, as opposed to having no sights whatsoever. But fundamentally, it is an AK. I'm not worried about this becoming reliable. I think a, you know, a couple of range trips, the appropriate amount of time to wear in and get that phosphate coating kind of polished down where it needs to be for everything to make correctly, and it will start to function. Uh, the older design is a little bit different. It misses a couple of the features, specifically the rail, but it functions quite well. It's a little more proven reliably reliability. I've got two of these things and they both just worked from day one. This one hopefully will get to working. The MSRP on these is $1059. You can get them less expensive. At the moment what I'm finding is that the US made one is harder to find but less desirable. Everybody wants the Romanian one. Really the big reason I wanted was this rail. If it weren't for the rail I probably would get the Romanian one uh, even though I do like the handguard on this better. But you probably can get this under MSRP right now. That may change, especially if these two do truly prove to be reliable. But right now, these are a bit of a bargain, if you can find one. They're 100% made in the U.S., even the magazines. Everything that you see is made in the U.S. But the AK platform is well known, so I don't see any reason why they can't make them as well in the United States as they would anywhere else. Beyond that, if you're looking for a truck gun, something that doesn't require a lot of care and feeding, but that's more of a rifle cartridge instead of a handgun cartridge, these might be a good choice. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Play, or Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere. And comment if you've got anything that you want to say about this gun or any of our videos. Thank you.